multiple impacts from a Boeing 707, the largest aircraft at its time. An analysis, released in 1964, claims that the buildings were investigated and found to be safe in an assumed collision with a 707 traveling at 600 miles per hour. Such collision would result in only local damage which could not cause collapse or substantial damage to the building. A 707 has four engines instead of two, and its cruise speed is 607 miles per hour. The Boeing 767s that struck the North and South Tower were traveling at 440 and 540 miles per hour, respectively. in touch with him we have a witness who saw what happened at the world trade center this apparently was uh, a commuter plane that smashed into it with such force that uh, the windows of the pick a bagel smashed with a big bang uh, everybody was very frightened did you uh, manage to see what kind of plane it was i couldn't tell it, it was a smaller it looked like a smaller plane but i couldn't tell not I'm not really sure. A medium-sized body plane with uh, engines on both sides. Almost like a gray black color in nature on the plane. I uh, would say it wasn't a huge jet, but it was a plane that sounded like it was a fighter jet overhead. I worked right next door at 74 Trinity Place. We heard the first one come in. I, I didn't know what it was. It sounded like a missile. Oh my God, Ed, another plane just hit the World Trade Center. Another plane. It was a medium-sized plane. Unbelievable. It, it, it would appear, Jim, mm. as if there's more smoke coming from the ground at, at and uh, well, we used to have another uh, we have a, yes things have fallen to the yes. ground and are burning and we one have one gentleman told me he was on the 65th floor standing next to an elevator when the elevator exploded and knocked him out of his shoes another woman said that she was working on the 49th floor and she's seen people in the stairwells with burns broken arms people are passing out of the stairwells from the heat she says there's a lot of heat and smoke it's a horrible scene here i'm live at broadway and fulton allison keys wcbs 880 news all right thank you allison well, basically there's people running around down the street all the glass panes that are on the bottom yeah. part of the world trade center are all blown out you, can, you when i first heard it and ran over to the window it looked like there was fire on the bottom floor well they're ahead there and uh, all of this, the world... Oh, uh, wait. Oh, my God. They're, oh, my God. The building fell. Are you there? The building just fell. You said it sounded like the 4th of July. You heard a big explosion before I, the building fell? I saw it as it was happening, and it sounded as if you had a hundred of those little black cat firecrackers, and you lit them all off at once. That's what it sounded like. It sounded like the finale of the 4th of July over the East River. Oh my we just gosh. witnessed some kind of secondary uh, follow-up explosion. 10 o'clock Eastern Time this morning, just collapsing on itself. We have no idea what caused this. Almost looks like one of those planned implosions. As if a demolition team set off, when you see the old demolitions yes. of these old buildings, it my folded God. down on itself and it is oh not there God. anymore. If you wish to bring uh, anybody who's ever watched a building being demolished on purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the, at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. Right now, police have to determine is whether that explosion was caused from the initial impact of the plane or whether it was something that was exploded on the ground. Generally speaking, for a building to collapse in on itself like that, it would seem to indicate that there could have been an explosion, a bomb planted on the ground that would make the building collapse within itself. By that evening, eyewitnesses and experts alike were rushing to defend the official narrative of events, claiming that raging jet fuel fires melted the steel inside the Twin Towers. I saw this plane come out of nowhere and just ream right into the side of the Twin Tower, exploding through the other side. And then I witnessed both towers collapse, one first and then the second, mostly due to structural failure because the fire was just too intense. When one of those airplanes crashed into one of the towers, it was the equivalent of a six-point earthquake. 
Marlene Davis is the Dean of Architecture at the University of Tennessee. She calls the 110-story tall twin tower tube structures. That means there are no internal columns holding it up. You know, when we saw this yesterday, people said, oh my goodness, there was a bomb on there. There must have been a bomb that must collapsed. must have been a bomb it. below. Right, that, that finished the job. Well, it turns out we heard from uh, experts who said that, you know what, the, the fire on those floors, probably 1,500 degrees. Steel can only withstand so much because the steel structure that holds the building up was on the outside, and essentially, the building started to melt, and it gave way, and it toppled. Engineers suspect the temperatures inside the crash areas could have quickly reached well over 1,000 degrees, perhaps approaching 2,000 degrees, beyond the melting point of any steel. They were not designed, perhaps, to take a direct strike from something the size of a 737 or an Airbus, perhaps fully loaded with fuel. Steel will melt. Physics professor and explosives expert Van Romero. E even if there was no secondary explosives in the building, hitting the air, uh, having the airplane hit the building where it did, a large amount of weight above the damaged location, um, that damaged location being further damaged by the fire, uh, that uh, structure could no longer support the weight above it, and the collapse ensues. Numerous individuals, including some of the architects themselves, would claim that plane crashes were never taken into consideration and that the building was doomed to failure. Hyman Brown was the project engineer on the Twin Towers, the man on the ground in charge of making sure the buildings were built right, the way it was designed. Structural steel is fireproof to last between one and two hours, which it did, and then steel melts. Each tower was built around a central core. That core kept the building up, supporting the tower's so-called dead weight. Oh but when God. steel melts, according to Brown, like dominoes, it falls. Brown says the towers were built to withstand 200 mile an hour hurricanes, the 100 year storm, the worst nature could dish out. But he says an airplane crash never oh entered anyone's mind. However, that's not entirely true. Yet the impact of the planes alone did not cause that failure. In fact, tall building designers try to anticipate air accidents. Mark Loiseau is president of a company called Controlled Demolition. When this structure was designed, it was designed, to the best of my understanding, to take the impact of what was then the, the state-of-the-art airplane being used in our country, the Boeing 707. The building was designed to have a fully loaded 707 crash into it. That was the largest plane at the time. I believe that the building probably could sustain multiple impacts of jetliners because this structure is like the mosquito netting on your screen door. This intense grid and the jet plane is just a pencil puncturing that screen netting. John Skilling the World Trade Center's head structural engineer told the Seattle Times after the 1993 bombing that if a plane struck the building, there would be a horrendous fire, but the building structure would still be there. On August 21, 2002, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, commenced their investigation. NIST is a government agency that reports back to the United States Department of Commerce headed at that point by Donald Evans and later replaced by Carlos Gutierrez, both Bush cabinet appointees. As part of their investigation, NIST contracted Underwriters Laboratories to recreate floor models from the Twin Towers for the purpose of fire resistance tests. We heard about it in the news, we heard about it right away that the floors didn't collapse. Okay, so they tested these huge models. They're models, but they're huge. I mean, one model was essentially the same size and exactly the same as one of the, of the types of floor sections used. And they tested it according to ASTM E119. It exposed it to much longer fire and uh, temper higher temperatures than we know were, were present in the World Trade Center. So right away there was a problem. And that's August of 2004. The final report was released on October 26, 2005 producing over 10,000 pages. It will not explain the actual collapse of the buildings. They only claim to get to collapse initiation and state flatly that it led to global collapse. The report, admittedly, 
does not actually include the structural behavior of the tower after the conditions for initiation were reached and collapse became inevitable. We were charged with finding out the cause of the collapse. And we've, we uh, found 